call. Best part about my job is I get to shake hands with a lot of brave men. Yeah, both of us so terribly alone, General. I make the command decisions around here. My God, there could be a half a million of our boys dead on the beaches of France. Well, it's on. No one can stop it now. The time to get off our tails has arrived. Okay? I am ten times the leader that that little British tin soldier is. Your plan is too risky. It must be called off now. There isn't room enough for both of us in this command. For once, you may be right. Give them hell across the English Channel. It takes killing to stop this. Yes, I can kill them. Tomorrow, John Eisenhower graduates from West Point, second lieutenant. I hope tomorrow he's still proud of his old man. What's going to happen next? When they say the Japanese submarine shell Los Angeles last night. I don't believe it. Well, they do in California. There's absolute panic. Well, what do you mean by panic? They canceled the Rose Bowl game. Well, that's panic. Everybody in Washington's paranoid, too. You were the first friend I called for help. Well, Beetle, if you were really my friend, you wouldn't have called me here at all. 
I spent most of World War I right here in an office in this building, and I would like to spend the rest of this war up front. Not a chance, Ike. If the old man likes you, you're stuck behind a great big desk for the duration. Well, suppose I get him to hate me. Then he'll stick you behind a smaller desk. What do you have to do to get a combat command in this army? Who do I have to butter up? I don't know, but not him. Right now, your enthusiasm for combat is highly commendable. But tell me this. Have you ever commanded a division in actual combat? No, sir. A battalion? No, sir. A company? No, sir. A platoon? No, sir. In your entire career in World War I, did you ever hear a shot fired in anger? How could I, sir, when I never left this building? Well, Eisenhower, your qualifications are impeccable for remaining in it. Sir, I've been recommended for division command. I make the command decisions around here. According to General MacArthur, you have one of the best minds in the Army for logistics and organization. I want you in the War Plans Division, where you'll be useful to me. Not up in the front line, stopping a bullet. Good afternoon. Sir, does that mean I'll be stuck behind a desk for the rest of this war, too? If I say so, General. Good afternoon. Oh, one other thing, Eisenhower. Even though you may have been recommended for division command, you're going to stay right here at your present rank. And that's that. Don't expect promotion. General Marshall, I don't give a damn about promotion. I came from the field of this office to do my duty for my country. And I expect to do so as long as you want me here. And to hell with rank! Sir? to see us right away, Ike. Another meeting. Oh, oh, it's after midnight. It's too late to think. Not if you got four stars. Let's see some more of that Japanese film intelligence came up with. I didn't spend four years at West Point to sit in an office and watch the old man's newsreels. Now, Ike, for crying out loud, try not to give him any arguments this time. You know, he's getting a little annoyed with you. Remember, you're in the army. I know it. You keep your mouth shut, your brain in a sling, and your powder dry. Ours not to reason why. Japanese forces stormed the fortress of Corregidor in the Philippines and overran its last few survivors. These recently acquired Japanese films show General Jonathan Wainwright signing the first military surrender in the history of the United States of America. And the death march of American prisoners captured with him on Bataan. Reports smuggled out of the Philippines say that almost 50% of the U.S. soldiers in that march did not survive the ordeal. Enough of that. Gentlemen, how can we make sure it never happens again? Obviously, by doing everything we can to strengthen the Navy, George. I would have been disappointed if you hadn't said that, Admiral. Let me show you why. Our west coast, from Seattle, San Diego is wide open to attack and invasion. We must immediately write off the war in Europe and shift our fleet out of the Atlantic so that we can bring every ship, every weapon, every man available to the defense of our Pacific coast. This is not my considered opinion alone. I believe this is the opinion of every ranking officer in all the services. Baloney. I don't know. Was that your voice I heard? Sorry, sir. Just a private opinion. Did you care to make it public and give us all the benefit of your one-star wisdom? Sir, almost every officer in this room is better qualified to speak than I am. If rank is the measure. I don't know. You surprised me. You told me yourself you have no regard for rank. We have these informal discussions to encourage independent thinking. If you have anything of value to contribute, it's your duty to do so now. If you put it that way, sir, I have no choice.
My sword, General. I'll only use it for self-defense, sir. <laughs> yeah, I smoke, General. I always think better when I smoke. If you thought properly, Eisenhower, you wouldn't smoke at all. But go ahead. If Russia is knocked out of the war, gentlemen, we all better start learning German. Now, Europe, not the Pacific, is the only front that all three allies can attack simultaneously. The Russians, the British, and us. Now, the British Isles must be turned into the greatest military base of all time so that from it we can throw the largest amphibious force in history across the English Channel to invade the coast of France. A lot of our experienced officers say a frontal attack on the massive fortifications across the English Channel would be military suicide. Well, I'm not advocating an attack tomorrow, sir. But one day soon, America will be mass-producing combat planes by the thousands. The Luftwaffe will be driven from the skies. Our paratroopers will be able to outflank those massive Nazi fortifications so that we can land a million men in Hitler's front yard. The planes you're talking about don't exist. Your whole idea is visionary. Yes, sir. That's his strongest point, I feel. Well, Eisenhower, what if I said your whole plan is idiotic? General Marshall, war is idiotic. How soon could you leave for London? Sir? The President and I have been talking about a plan similar to yours with the British. Are you packed? Well, General, I, I never unpack. I'm in the Army. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, are you all right? In a proper war, women stay out of uniform. Oh, with any luck, I should be out of this one shortly. Damn, damn. Just a minute. I'm coming. Hold it. Okay. Dick! I'm AWOL. I've been waiting in the car all morning for one of your bloody American generals, and I finally told Sybil I was starving for lunch. Mm. Oh, I am starving. Okay. Mm. Again, that's what I came for. Okay, mm. I know I'm not very neat, but I do have one rule. Not in the hallway. Oh, why not? Shake up this stuffy old hotel. Connor, it's the finest hotel in London. They still have toilet paper. Oh, darling, you're wounded. Yes, oh. but they don't give purple hearts for shaving. Still, that's as close to combat as I've come since I got here. Not true. That was a lovely little battle we had last night. Kay. Kay, I want you. I'm going to marry you. But I have a staff meeting at 1 o'clock. There you are, you little beggar. Lost track of you during the night. Kay, did you hear what I said? My dear Major Arnold, two of my uncles and one of my dearest nieces have been killed in this bloody war already, and they weren't even in uniform. I'm not going to be cheated. All I want is to hold you in my arms a little while, and who knows if either of us will be alive tomorrow. Now we have exactly 30 minutes. Stop, stop. One of us should say I love you. I believe it's your turn. I love you, Kay. Oh, I love you, Dick. Please, I love you so. Oh, God. That'll be Sybil. I gave her your room number. What? Hmm. Hello? Sybil, you couldn't be more inconvenient. Well, not quite yet. Oh, damn. Yes, I'll be right there. What's his rank, love? A two-star? Do you realize I dragged myself out of bed at 5 a.m. and have been waiting the whole bloody morning for him to show up? How dare he have only two stars? What's his name? Oh, God, can you spell it? Eisenhower. You sure he's on our side? <laughs> yes, yes, I'll be right there. 
If he was a spy, he would have thought of a much better name. Can you imagine? A two-star. Sybil's getting half Arnold. He's got three going on four. Mm. I always get part of the chicken, goes over the fence last. Mm. Mm. Oh. To be continued. Mm. Try, uh, Eisenhower. Oh, sorry, sir. I I'm absolutely dreadful at foreign languages, especially German. I'm your driver, Kay Summersby. Well, you're awful at saluting too, Miss Summersby. I'm a civilian, sir. And a woman. Oh. I'm General Mark Clark. I hope you can pronounce Clark. Oh, yes. A fine British name, Clark. Let's go, we're late. Yes, sir. Miss Summersby, would you mind not saluting, if that's what that is? Yank. Wait here, sir. The Connaught Hotel. What? Good Lord. Miss Summersby, I hate to ask, but do you know where the Connaught Hotel is? Yes, sir. This is it. For your information, General. I got out of a very warm bed at 5 a.m. to drive you and General Clark no more than 250 yards. It's going to be a tough war for you Americans. I am glad you are saving your strength, sir. Miss Summersby, like it or not, we are allies. We're going to have to learn how to get along with each other. Now, since the British nation is our host, I suggest you start first. If you're going to drive for us, get rid of that red nail polish. It's unmilitary. So is wasting petrol, General. Uh, begging your pardon, Miss. <clears throat> but uh, who are those two officers? I don't know who the taller one is, but the shorter one is Jesus Christ. <laughs> Gentlemen. Gentlemen. Gentlemen, may I present our guests from the War Department in Washington, General Dwight Eisenhower, General Mark Clark. At ease, gentlemen. At ease. You officers in this room are the vanguard of American forces in England. General Clark and I have been detailed by General Marshall to report on your state of readiness for immediate combat against the German war machine. If what I see here is any indication, all you look ready for is tea time. I've heard this operation has been called the Connaught Country Club. Well, that club is now disbanded. The Atlantic Alliance was not intended to be formed solely with members of the opposite sex. Every officer in this room will get one chance to prove he belongs here. One, that's all. Either measure up or be shipped back to the U.S. For those remaining to participate in the invasion of Europe, I wish Godspeed and good luck. Well, what do you think? You know, for the first time, I have a strange feeling there's a war on. Our impulsive American cousins must learn the virtue of patience. They will never succeed in shipping sufficient numbers of men and material to this side of the Atlantic to launch an attack across the English Channel this year or even next year. In the meantime, they must rely on the British general staff to leave their inexperienced army and navy on the long, slow road to victory. General Montgomery, shouldn't we work together instead of apart? 
General Eisenhower, the British Army and the Royal Navy were winning wars when America was inhabited by naked savages. <laughs> now that we've got our clothes on, maybe you ought to let us help. And so we shall. But the only attack we can launch, with any possibility of success in the near future, even with America's eager help, is one directed against the German and Italian forces occupying North Africa. Now, uh, this is... May I ask who's smoking? I am General Montgomery. I don't permit smoking in my headquarters. You would please extinguish it at once. Is that an unreasonable request? On the contrary, General, it's the only reasonable remark you've made all morning. The only practical offensive we can mount in the foreseeable future is against the German and Italian forces occupying North Africa. Can you get us to the airfield in 45 minutes? Yes, sir. You can take the pounding on the back road, sir. Thank you. Well, what have you done to your fingernails, Miss Sarge B? I Americanized them according to your instructions, General. Khaki. North Africa is ridiculous. Across the Channel and straight into France. That's where we should hit them. And this year. From what I've seen, Ike, we won't have enough fighting men over here by then. What about fighting women? Wipe this conversation from your mind, Miss Summersby. It's privileged and confidential. British women do many of the jobs you Americans reserve for the GIs. We've lost a lot of men already, Miss Summersby. Britain uses women because she has no choice. My dear General Eisenhower. I watched a thousand bombs fall on London one awful night before Christmas, and the Nazis weren't particular who they fell on. I saw bodies blown apart that could only have been women's bodies, picked up and placed in those canvas bags and tossed into my ambulance. If my body's on the line, General, don't tell me a woman can't fight back. No one's throwing mine into a canvas bag, thank you. I have other plans for it. You drove an ambulance, Miss Summersby. I and a few hundred other weak women during the Blitz, you've heard of the Blitz. Somewhere in that lovely English sky was the Luftwaffe, day and night. My area was Lambeth down by the docks and tenements. The bombs would be falling like grapes, and the ACAC lit up the sky so that my little ambulance didn't need lights to see the dead and the dying. The men in my crew would bring the bodies out, usually burnt. Black, twisted. The smell was so bad we had to wear gauze masks, but they didn't help much. And that it was over, because some British lads in their foolish little planes gave up their lives for the rest of us. And where were the brave men of the United States Army then, waiting for us girls to get out of our blood-stained ambulances so they could tell us not to wear red nail varnish? What do you think made our nails red to begin with? Summersby, I want you to know you succeeded in making me feel like the SOB I really am. together in time for a strike across the channel this year. But the idea of a single commander over all our unified forces in England is not standard operating procedure. You know how the army feels about anything relatively new. We're still feeding 2,000 mules. Most of them wearing gold braid. The present company accepted. Of course, sir. Eventually, I believe there should be one commander over all allied forces. In the meantime, the United States should take the first step by eliminating all separate commands of our Army, Navy, and Air Service, and put them all under the command of just one man. I thought Franklin Roosevelt was Commander-in-Chief of our Armed Forces. Well, if you'll excuse me, General, what's his training for the job? Why don't you ask him? Who do you suggest as that one man to prepare our forces in England for the invasion? If you're not available, I believe there's only one other truly qualified officer in our entire armed forces. 
General McNarney. You are absolutely sure McNarney is the best man. Not only the best, but outside of yourself, he's the only one qualified. Eisenhower, I wish I were as certain of what I was going to have for dinner as you are about the future of mankind. Now, don't tell him how to steer his wheelchair. Joe McNarney? Never! We need him in Washington as Deputy Chief of Staff. Mr. President, I honestly believe he's the best qualified for the job. Didn't General Marshall tell you that I concur with his choice? No, sir. Well, then, I am delighted to allow my distinguished house guest to reveal this military secret. He enjoys a good surprise as much as I do. <laughs> the last time we British surprised the White House, we burned it down. <laughs> I trust you will not make us want to repeat that gesture, for... By the action your president has taken, with my hearty approval, we may well be placing the future of our island in your capable hands. My hands. Major General Dwight David Eisenhower is hereby appointed commanding general of the European theater and will command all US forces now in or hereafter assigned to the European Theatre of Operations. What's the matter, Ike? Don't you want the job? Of course I want it, Mr. President. General Eisenhower, you will be preparing men for an invasion such as has never been seen in human history. Because of the demands of war, you will have to make many decisions by yourself affecting the lives of hundreds of thousands of men. Until this moment, I always thought mine was the loneliest job in the world. to propose a toast to the new commander of the European Theater of Operations? Only six months ago, you were just a colonel in the regular army. I'm so very proud of you, Ike. This almost makes up for not getting to play in the Army-Navy game, doesn't it? Almost, yeah. I don't know whether I deserve congratulations or condolences. Why? You frightened? Damn right. I'm scared to death, maybe. I don't know if I'm ready for it. Ike, when do you have to leave? Right away. I think they want me to go before I change my mind. You'll go. You'll go and I'll stay. You know, come to think of it, I guess I'm the best soldier in this family. Now, I 
I've got a husband who's a commanding general and a grown son at West Point. There's a terrible war going on. My world will never be the same again. No one's will. Twenty-two and a half minutes from Bushy Park. That's excellent. Thank you, General Spence. <laughs> Although I think I did nip the trousers of that bobby into Fargo Square. Selling air, Miss Summersby. Oh, uh, General, uh, I know this is being terribly forward, but um, are you liable to be long? Well, it's my first conference with General Eisenhower. My guess would be yes. Why? Sir, my fiancé is major on staff here, and um, I understand he has some time free. Would I be permitted to be unmilitary for perhaps 30 minutes? Kay, you've never complained about the hours I've worked here, the jobs I've asked you to do, so any time that your major is in town, you just let me know and I'll stop the war for you somehow. Would, uh... Oh, an hour and a half be sufficient? Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Well, it certainly wouldn't be sufficient for me. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, oh. <laughs> he's a love that one, Sybil. <laughs> I can hardly believe he's American. Well, he's probably not full-blooded American, or he'd be like Bear Eisenhower. Did you know he'd made all the officers move out of the Connaught and into barracks? What? Mm -hmm. We can't do that to officers. Oh, tell that to your spit and polished general. They're calling Grosvenor Square Eisenhower Platt. But never fear. Flat 12E over the greengrocers in Shepherd Market. I, I, I couldn't think of taking your flat. No, it's not mine. This is war. The girls got together and chipped in on a lovely little foxhole. You bring your own fox. <laughs> Kay! Dick! Oh! Darling, the Oh, yes. Mm. Uh, no fraternizing with the natives. That order has just come down from the commanding general. Darling, can we get married in an hour and a half? That way, that Eisenhower ogre will have to let us fraternize as often as we want to. Well, there's one slight technicality. You see, I've just asked for combat duty. Combat? Dick, have you gone mad? Hey, you have a nice, cushy job at headquarters. Well, well, I can charge combat's the coward's way out. Oh. No, 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 listen to me. The truth is that he's made us all feel a little bit guilty. Now, Kay, you've done your share in this war. It's time for me to do it. Oh, for heaven's sake. Obviously, under the circumstances, it wouldn't be fair for me to ask you to marry me now. If there's anything I detest, it's patriotism from Americans. Now, look, we've got to talk this over in private. 12E. Right. Now, if we're going to have a battle, I want to be free to use all my weapons. No. Yes. <laughs> Miss Summersby? Yes? I'm Tax Lee. I'm one of General Eisenhower's aides. The general wants to see you. Really? Does the general know that I am British and a civilian and not subject to his orders, Captain Lee? Don't be too sure, Miss Summersby. I've got an idea before long. The British Army, the British Navy, and the RAF will be under his control. Good Lord. I may become a nun. Too late, dearie. To put it briefly, my American driver's got me lost three times in this city. Now, whatever your faults, Miss Summersby, and you have many, you've never got me lost. So I made a trade with General Spots for your services. General Eisenhower, I do not relish being treated like a, a side of beef. There are certain of my services. Even General Spatz is not authorized to negotiate for me. And if I were Miss Summersby, I assure you I would have negotiated them for myself. Thank you, General. At least you are a gentleman. Might I inquire exactly what it is for which the General has agreed to trade me? I'd like to have some idea of my worth. Yes. Uh, tell him to hold on a minute. I couldn't bribe the general with anything short of Buckingham Palace, so we decided to uh, toss a coin. Was I heads or tails? Miss Summersby, it may seem unimportant to you, but getting me where I have to go as quickly as possible may be of some aid to your country. I would be happy to point you in the direction of the Connaught, sir, if you were certain it will benefit the British Empire. <laughs> Come along, Kay. What did you ever do to her? Miss Summersby? I've been looking all over London for you. I brought this back from the U.S. Consider it an apology. 
What, no Hershey bars? <laughs> oh. King Arthur's court. I would suspect that's precisely the way our Prime Minister wants you to feel. Prime Minister, what sort of fellow is this Eisenhower chap? You will find the Americans who sent us a clerk. With your approval? My insistence. It will be simpler to maneuver him out of our way. Rule Britannia. My dear, I... You have houses like this in Abilene, Kansas, General? Well, I was told there was one, Mr. Prime Minister, but my mother would never let me visit it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, come in, gentlemen, come in. Here's the conference room. Help yourself to a drink if you want it. Down to work so quickly, General. <clears throat> we don't have much time to waste, Mr. Prime Minister. <laughs> the Joint Chiefs feel we must uh, launch the Channel invasion this year. My dear Eisenhower, with all due respect to America, the far-sighted country that gave the world my mother, <laughs> I urge caution. After the frightening news from North Africa, that Rommel and his Nazi Africa Corps have destroyed the British forces at Tobruk, and are once more hammering towards Cairo and the Suez Canal, it seems obvious that the invasion of Europe will have to be put off for at least a year. I thought this meeting was called to set the date. Precisely. The date I propose is next year, June 1943, or possibly 1943. Well, what about the year 2000? That has a nice uh, ring to it. I quite agree. I'm willing to wait if you are. Uh, Mr. Churchill, you made a promise to... Mr. Roosevelt, you made a promise to Joseph Stalin that we would set up a second front in Europe. Are you saying England will never do it? If it means as large a sacrifice of British lives as there was in 1914... But you promised the Russian... General state. Eisenhower! I hear you are an expert bridge player. You must know that Uncle Joe Stalin has more aces in his hand than he wants his partners to see. I assure you, Russia will survive. But Ronald and the Africa Corps are heading for the oil fields of Arabia. If Ronald gets that oil, our aircraft, our tanks, our, our factories will clang to a halt. We must act now. If we land amphibious troops, here, on the North African coast. Just a minute, sir. Just a minute. Lord Mountbatten, you're planning to land in Algeria and Morocco, and they belong to the French. They hate you worse than they hate the Nazis. Yes, when the French surrendered to the Germans, we did try to sink the French fleet. The Americans would have done the same. Maybe. But, uh, by God, we would have pulled it off. You didn't. Now, there are still French battleships in Oran, Casablanca, and Algiers. Well, you're talking about landing. Yes, and something must be done immediately to get the rest of the French fleet to come over to our side. Exactly. How? I promise you I will crawl on my hands and knees and personally kiss the rear end of every admiral in the French Navy, if that'll do it. With the French, it might work, but I doubt it. I'd say our chances of surviving the French artillery, landing in North Africa and making it stick, are less than 50-50. And General Eisenhower... We must land, and we must make it safe. But how, sir? I have been in communication with your president. He has promised the tools to do the job. Weapons, supplies, troops, and the man to do the job. Congratulations, General Eisenhower. I am recommending you to command the Allied invasion of North Africa. Sorry? Phased out of England by good old Winnie, so he can run the show. And postpone the Channel invasion maybe forever. Good heavens, why are you so awfully pessimistic? I've just been given another promotion. And that's bad? 
This one is yes. My first combat command and being tossed in against Rommel, the Africa Corps, and the French Navy. Huckleberry Finn against Alexander the Great. So you intend to turn it down? Hell no, I've just begun to fight. That's a phrase from American history, Miss Summersby. Good Lord, air raid. Close your shelters round the corner. Forget the shelter, get me back to headquarters. Oh, not very likely, it's much too dangerous. And don't expect me to hold the door open for you, it's every man for himself. Oh, shut up, dearie, your next raid I'll leave you outside. If you disobey my orders again, I'll have you skinned alive, Miss Summersby. Hey, call me Kay. Next time you leap out of my car, you may not have time for my full name. Oh, dear. I come down my disrespect for generals, quite honestly, you know. My father was one for the Royal Munster Fusiliers. That's an Irish regiment, isn't it? Mm, yes, he was black Irish, as I am. Mummy always said she left him because she couldn't bear his temper or the Irish weather. Personally, I never thought the weather was so bad. in love and I do so want to get married first if it's not too much trouble for God. I'd almost forgotten people still got married. I'd almost forgotten people still fell in love. Well, who is it? One of yours? One of yours, in fact. He's actually volunteered for combat because you've made him think he ought to. And he's so unsuited for it. I don't think he could ever knowingly kill a human being. You think I could? Yes. Yes, I think you could. Uh, definitely, yes. My father actually enjoyed it, he told me. Of course, only if it helped the Empire. I don't think I'll enjoy it very much when the time comes. But then I'm not from a military background like you. My mother and father are, are both pacifists. My grandfather was a minister. My mother cried when I told her I was going to West Point. She never has understood. Neither do I. Okay. I have a son back home, Johnny. My wife and I lost our first child when he was only two from scarlet fever. And there wasn't a damn thing we could do about it. I have never been hit so hard by anything in my life. His name was Dwight also, and we called him Ike. Although he could barely pronounce it when he died. Uh, Johnny's in his second year at West Point. I guess fathers are all the same. If you're a lawyer or a doctor, then that's what you want for your son. And if you're a soldier, then that's what you want him to be. At least I did. But I can't help praying that the war will be over before he's in it. 
if I should do anything to add one extra day to this war or cost the life of someone like Johnny. I believe this. I may say it differently, maybe not as well, but this is what I believe. Now, if it takes killing to stop this, then yes, I believe in killing. I didn't mean to turn this into a sermon, Kay. I needed to talk to someone, and uh, you were here. Perfectly all right, General. You've made me feel like the SOB, I really am. Governor, but I'm taking him back now. Oh. Lend me, you know. I Nearly suffocated. Darling, where are they sending you? Scotland. Scotland? Oh, my God. Do you know something I don't? Darling, I know everything you don't. I'm with the commander of this whole terrible mess, remember? What's in Scotland, Kay? I can't tell, not even you. Not all this damn war. Not to worry. Whatever happens, I've decided to surrender. Don't do anything foolishly brave. Do you promise? I want you back in one large, delicious piece. Kay, if I should happen to get through wherever we're going, let's get married, even if it's in a foxhole in Siberia. Do me one favor, darling. What? Always hide behind me. So close to London. Well, he's got to have one place where he can relax. You know, ride horses, play a little golf. <laughs> Who would you go? <laughs> what makes you think Ike wants a puppy for his birthday? This one can't even salute. Besides, I thought you didn't care for American generals. Don't pry. Well, all right. I need a favor from the general, a big one. Ah, oh, that's better. The war is confusing enough. What do you mean? I like my women to stay in character. Conniving. Very funny. Did your cloak and dagger mission to North Africa accomplish anything? Well, I found that uh, some of the French generals there are pro Vichy, some were pro de Gaulle, some were anti de Gaulle, and a few were even pro Nazi. But one thing's for sure, every last one of them is anti-British. The French, they are a funny race, parlez-vous. And no wonder the British were so happy to let us run the show in North Africa. Mark, what Frenchman can we get 
to keep the French from firing on us when we hit the beaches. The French officers all suggested General Henri Giraud. Giraud. Hero of both world wars, refused to go along with the French capitulation to Hitler and wound up in a Nazi prison. But he escaped, didn't he? That's right. Right now he's someplace in southern France. Giraud. Any man that can escape from a Nazi prison camp has the kind of guts we need. But how? If he's still in Vichy, France. But it's too late for any more butts. Find your own and get him out any way you can. Right. All right, let's go. It's time for my surprise party. How the hell did you know we were giving you a surprise party? I've broken your code. <laughs> hey, that's, that's good. Just put that on the middle of the table. All right. Civil! How are you? Thank you. Thank you. All right, just drop the boom on the table, okay? All right, we got everything now. We don't have much time here. Surprise. <laughs> well, there goes another military secret. <laughs> All right, one, two, three, four. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear General. Happy birthday to you. I'm sorry, Miss Ryan, but I understand you're having your own later over the green grocers. Oh, oh my God, everybody's a spy. <laughs> I want to thank you all for remembering a birthday that I would rather forget. Oh. General, this is for the cake. You might need it. <laughs> Three candles. A little late, but uh, in honor of your third star. That means I'm still outranked by uh, General Montgomery. <laughs> <laughs> well, just make a wish, sir, and blow him out. Everybody needs a dog to kick around, sir. I thought he might take the pressure off the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> you may be right. You better blow out the candles, General. They're melting my icing and we can't get any more sugar. Take your yeah. sir. Don't on, forget sir. to make that wish. I want it, please. <laughs> Good. I got it, I got it. May I ask what you wish, General? That all the dying that's about to happen will be worth it. some terribly hush-hush correspondence. Uh, top secret and classified. I was about to write a letter to Mamie. Oh. What is it you want? I want to go to North Africa. Oh, yeah, that didn't come out the way I meant at all. I intended to plead. You could never plead, Kay. Argue, order, shout, but uh, never plead. That young man of mine, the one I told you about, Major Richard Arnold, he was shipped to Scotland last night, and um, being here, I, I can't help but know that that means he'll be in your invasion of North Africa. Kay, you've been cleared for sensitive information. But as you know, these things mustn't be mentioned. Well, I didn't think there was any harm in telling you. Sometimes I wish your Prime Minister felt the same way. Uh, about your Major Arnold, what do you want me to do about him? Have him uh, transferred out? Because I can't do that. No, 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 no. He hated it if you thought I'd done something like that. No, you see, the thing is, last night he asked me to marry him. Or I asked him, I can't remember which. He's asked me many times before, but last night was definite. We were both perfectly sober and fully clothed. Yes, that is quite definite. This isn't just some wartime role in the hay, General. Dick and I have both been married before, and... Uh, my divorce has come through, and his will too, any minute. I love him, and I would dearly love to become his bride before he stumbles into a booby trap or something equally foolish. 
If I'm in North Africa, I have a chance of bringing it off. But you're a civilian, Kay. I can't order a civilian into a combat zone. I'm not very civilian, you know that. And, and you will need a driver over there. Generals never walk. <laughs> so now you know why I gave you this bloody expensive puppy, sir. Well, now, who's going to train this bloody expensive puppy? Oh, I'll teach him, General. I promise you. He's very bright. I'll explain things to him, and I'll set him a good example. I'm sure you will. You know, I think I'm going to name him, uh... Telek, T-E-L-E-K. That's for Telegraph Cottage and K. Now, do you like it? I mean, uh, since you're training him, I guess he's half yours. Yes. Does that mean yes or no? <sighs> K, have you ever fired a pistol? Oh, yes, sir. My father insisted I learn to shoot and to ride. He was in the cavalry, and I think he felt everybody ought to be. This is a Beretta. Small, a little recoil. At close range is quite effective. I want you to go out in the meadow tomorrow and fire it until you can knock the buttons off a German uniform at 20 yards. I wouldn't want anything to happen to you where you're going. Oh, General, thank you. Oh, sorry, sir. I know that was unmilitary, but I thought you'd prefer it to my salute. Oh, you're absolutely right. <laughs> Your major to be careful. I wouldn't want him on my conscience. It's been a long road. Je vous embrasse. Au nom de la France. This way, sir. I'll show you I'm ready to take over full command to the suite. I tried to explain, but he can't understand my French, and he doesn't want to understand my English. Naturellement, the first landings must occur near Marseille. Then we must move quickly up the valley of the road split the Nazi forces in two. And then, Paris. General Joe, obviously you've been out of touch with the uh, military situation. The attack will occur at dawn tomorrow, but not in France. In French Morocco, in French Algeria. Incroyable. Unbelievable. You are attacking neutral French possessions. The French army and navy will resist to the death. That's why we need your help here, sir. This way, General. I understand your feelings. But in North Africa, we must try to stop Rommel's drive toward the Mideastern oil. Throw the Germans into the Mediterranean. Now, you must order the French Navy and coast artillery not to fire on our ships. I must refuse. It is impossible. I will take command only to return with the liberating army to the soil of France. For this reason, I am here. For this reason only. For God's sake, you've been rotting in the Nazi concentration camp. Now, who is the enemy? Them, not us. Now, you must issue this order. What will be my authority? Commander of all French forces in North Africa. I'll give you my guarantee. And what will be your authority? Commander-in-chief of all combined Allied forces in this theater. You do not understand my country. My family will not allow me to assume a subordinate command. I am Joffre. I am Foch. I am Giraud. I am France. Well, by God, I'm Ike Eisenhower, the toughest general. Damn Kansas farmer, you general. ever tried to throw a horseman over on? Ike. Ike. You don't have one soldier to command in this invasion except for the poor misguided idiots who are planning to shoot the wrong way. 
You have a whole French Navy planning to shoot the arms and legs of American kids who think all Frenchmen are like Lafayette. You have a French government in Vichy helping to ship French Jews to Nazi concentration camps. And don't try to tell me you're God, General Giraud, because I know you're not. Charles de Gaulle is God. He told me so himself. Now you're going to tell the French Army and French Navy we're trying to free your country, not hurt it, or by God, I'll break you to civilian second class. Never have I been so outraged. General Henri Honoré Giraud is second in command to no one. Now you've just seen a lesson in Kansas diplomacy. What am I going to learn to keep my mouth shut? Hello, everybody. This is Lowell Thomas in London. At dawn this morning, a joint British and American task force launched a series of landings in French North Africa. They hoped that the French would welcome them with open arms. Ah, but they were wrong. French naval vessels and coastal batteries opened up a murderous bombardment. Allied naval vessels had no choice but to return the fire, and the battle was on. The British, to some extent, are reaping the harvest of hate sown when they tried to sink the French fleet. And the French include anyone who helps England, that means America, of course, in their passionate hatred. American troops, many of them shipped directly from basic training in the United States, clambered into landing craft under heavy fire, heading for the distant beaches. Their first time in battle, the first offensive action of American ground troops since Pearl Harbor. French and Casablanca Fortress have opened fire on our ships. They've scored a hit at 14,000 yards. Three of our power troop planes shot down, sir. Where the hell is George Patton's task force? We've lost radio contact with his ship, sir. Heavy artillery at Algiers Harbor, General. More French batteries shooting at us. The French, they are a funny race, parlez-vous. What a waste. What a terrible waste. Patton was supposed to land near Casablanca four hours. Where the hell is it? Oran Airport on fire, sir. Ike. Marshal Patan is broadcasting from France. He's ordering the French Army and Navy to resist us to the death. Oh, old man speaking with a German accent. Sir, General Patton radios that he's ashore in force at Casablanca and kicking the hell out of the French. Right. The frogs are throwing down their arms and coming over to our side. Yeah, it's about time. Bless his heart. Well, send him a message that uh, their weapons are to be returned. They're to be treated as allies, not frogs. Bless his heart. Sorry, good Get sir. Get off Patton. Huh? Good, sir. General Giroux. has been a terrible night for France, for me, and for you. General Henri Giraud places himself under your command. established ashore, with the help at last of the Free French, Hitler has intensified the submarine warfare in the Mediterranean. Allied troop transports from England, with reinforcements for Eisenhower's forces, are being attacked by a wolf pack of Nazi submarines. Losses reported to be mounting daily. This is the captain speaking. Abandoned ship. To your stations.
There's a report here from the British Navy. Four ships have been torpedoed near Iran. One of them is the Strathallan. Strathallan? Well, that's the troop transport. Kay Summersby is aboard. Was aboard. Let me see that. Oh, God. Kay? They're picking up survivors, but that's all we know. They could have arranged for her to come with us by air. I brought the dog. Torpedoed. At least. <laughs> Can you tell me if Major Richard Arnold is at his headquarters? He's with the engineers. Any of you guys know Major Arnold with engineers? Well, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, baby. Must have given you the wrong name when he torpedoed you. <laughs> Excuse me, I'd like to place the call to headquarters now, GS, please. Honest now, who are you going to call, honey? General Dwight D. Eisenhower. My God, it's Queen Mary. <laughs> hey, what's all the noise? Lady wants, to, uh, lady wants to talk to Eisenhower, sir. Corporal, I'm tired and cold and nasty, but I wouldn't want to ask General Eisenhower to tear your head off, so please put the call through immediately. All right, what is all this bull about Ike? Ah, uh, Colonel, I am a civilian on General Eisenhower's personal staff, sir. I'm here by his orders and assigned to his headquarters. He will want to know where I am. I'm certain he knows that Strathallan has been torpedoed and sunk, so please, I beg you to help me reach him by telephone. What kind of game are you playing? I'm not. He wouldn't import a civilian for his headquarters staff. Get out, Gears. See if you can reach one of his aides. Yes, sir. Uh, Colonel, uh, <gasps> sir, do you suppose I could possibly have a cup of coffee, please? I haven't had anything to eat since yesterday, and I'm absolutely famished. I'd like to accommodate you, but this isn't a coffee shop. Uh, Colonel, sir, they want to know who's calling. Tell them. Tell them it's Kay Summersby, and I'm all right. Uh, some dame named Summersby came in here claiming that she's been... What? Is she all right? Well, yeah, she's all right. She's just, uh... Look. Who? General Eisenhower would like to speak to you. Thank you. Hello, General. Get the lady a chair. Yes, I'm not hurt. Oh, a little wet, but all in one piece. Oh, we were hit about uh, 1.30 this morning. Drifted about in lifeboats all night. A destroyer picked us up. British, of course. Oh, well, I muddled through. Yes, Oran. I I'm here at headquarters looking for Dick. Major Arnold. A and they tell me he's not here. Sorry? Oh, yes, sir. There's an officer here. All right. He wants to explain all that bull about Ike. Uh, Colonel Offenheim here, sir. Uh, General. Uh, sir, sir. Sir. Uh, sir. Major Richard Arnold. No, sir. Oh, 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 oh just, just a moment, sir. Uh, there is a Lieutenant Colonel Arnold. Perhaps he's... Lieutenant Colonel? Yes, sir. One of you sad sacks go in the next office, get Lieutenant Colonel Arnold, bring him in here immediately. Promoted? Oh, poor Army. Yes, sir. He's uh, sending his own plane for you in the morning. Oh, isn't that lovely? Sir? Oh, yes, sir. We'll make her as comfortable as possible, sir. Yes, sir. Well, she can have my quarters. 
Okay. Dick! Yes, sir. Oh, Dick, no, no. Oh. oh, darling. How the hell did you get to North Africa? Oh, it's too long a story. I, I was torpedoed and it was wet and awful. And, and the only thing that matters is that I'm here and that you're here. Mm. And look, look, I brought this night dress all the way from England for our wedding night. Now that your divorce is through, I don't want to wait another minute. Mm. We, we, we hauled the wounded into our boat and I tore up some of the night for bandages, but I only tore it where you won't miss it. And I'll... Mm. Darling, you know what you can do for me now? What? Get me a dreadful American hamburger, please. Uh. The Allied advance in North Africa has bogged down in the mud and rain of the worst winter in memory. And out of the storm and mist has come the echo of a name sending a chill to the bones of those who remembered the armored blitzkrieg that destroyed France. Rommel, Marshal Erwin Rommel, on the march again. Hitler's ablest general has ordered the huge Tiger tanks of his Africa Corps to make a surprise attack. Aided by German air power, his tough Nazi Panzer units have suddenly slashed into the Tunisian mountains and given green, disorganized American troops one of their worst defeats in our military history at a place none of us ever heard of before, Kazarine Pass. sector. Let's go, Kay. Rommel isn't taking any prisoners this trip. Right now, immediately, I want a counterattack launched. Wait, Commander! Sorry, Miss Sokipi. I forgot to say thank you, didn't I? You bet your stupid tail. Berg's command post. A whole company of combat engineers has been working day and night to build it. It's bomb-proof. Until now. Here we go. Damn it, Ward. 
Your troops control the passes, you had the artillery, and you let Rommel's panzer surprise you, and now there are 1,500 American boys lying dead in the Algerian mud, being picked over like hogs in a slaughterhouse. Ike, the French wouldn't take orders from me. The British wouldn't take orders well, from me. Well, why anybody. the hell should they when you're sitting here in your mink line foxhole getting the battle phone in 70 miles from the front? Now, Ward, within 24 hours, I want you to attack Rommel with everything we've got. It'll take a lot longer than that to perfect our defenses. You didn't hear me, Ward. Attack. I said attack. Now, I'm taking full responsibility. Now, where's the best place to hit and with what? All right. I'd say probably our best position. You're right about here. Find Duke Sabatla Road. We'll start with the 18th Armored, 16th Infantry. Have you personally seen the terrain at the Funduk Road? Have you ever looked at the 18th Armored tanks? It's all the reports right here. Erwin Rommel wrote a book once, Ward. I memorized almost every word of it because I knew I'd have to fight him someday. He said, nothing can take the place of the commander at the front. Let the men see you. The higher the rank, the greater the example of the commander on the men. In that case, Ike, maybe you should go. Okay, Ward, I will. And when I get back, you better damn well get out there and see for yourself. And if you fall up again, I'm kicking your tail back to the U.S. and putting George Patton in command. Now, get me a jeep and a driver and tell him to get me as close to the front as he can. And, Ward, if Rommel attacks, I'll phone you. Don't let it ring more than once. I feel a lot safer. Commence firing. Front edge of this battle line. Sir? Front edge of this battle line. Four miles over that ridge, sir. On the double. Come on, break Soldier, don't stop. I just want to see how these machines are doing. Well, if this was a woman, I'd kick her out of bed, sir. Why? It's a stinking coffin. It's got a pea shooter for a gun, wouldn't blow the cap off a bottle of Budweiser. The supply gave us training ammo instead of armor piercing. Why was that? That's all they had. Crowds are using stuff goes right through the plates. And what the hell, right? I guess back home they need all the good steel for Cadillacs. The new Sherman tanks are on their way now. Four of my buddies are on their way too, sir. They just brought them in, over there. Commander-in-Chief is still alive, sitting behind a stupid desk. You didn't have much help from your commanders in the field, Ike. Well, who picked them? I did. I'm the commander, Luke. You know that. I'm not responsible for this horrible mess.
I've never seen men die in battle before. I wish to hell some of those poor kids would close their eyes. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to help us produce more compelling historical content like this, please like, comment below, and share this video with fellow history buffs. And of course, be sure to subscribe to help keep history happening.